Yo, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino and your man D Hicks. How you doing? How you doing? Let me know what you want to hear. 812-303-5018 on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB broadcasting live from the Spuds and Stuff studio. Spuds and Stuff located on Washington and Bakey in the Ross Center. Give them a call at 812 402 7783. You can order online, order ahead at spudsandstuff.com. That's Spuds with a Z. Spudsandstuff.com is the home of the Holy Montana. The Holy <laughs> Montana Jack. He probably got that Holy Montana spud, you know what I mean? We was calling it the Holy Mother Spud. Out of yeah, I, I know it was Devin. Holy M something. Right. You know what I mean? But it had all the toppings on it. Boy, that was a huge potato. You can get a load of it too over there at Spud and stuff over there on uh, Washington and Beggy Rose. You know what I mean? Tell them Nino said. And as usual, we got a great show lined up for you got news about the baby having to face a fine at his last concert we'll tell you more about that then we got uh what's it uh, uh the federal communications commission has received reports on canceling demands to cancel saturday night live again it's not the first time they've been under a, a mm. threat of cancellation but it's coming a little bit more intense right now and i tell you why then we got uh kanye west apparently he's got him a new living space <laughs> to finish recording his Donda album and I tell you where and then uh my uh Mercedes Benz they're coming out with a biodegradable car would you wow. drive a bio no I'm telling you it's not as bad as you think but I tell you why man a biodegradable car coming out from uh Mercedes Benz plus he ain't ever the real the police are looking for a suspect in the shooting that happened on the uh twenty uh the eighteen hundred block of McConnell Avenue Saturday, and we uh, get a little bit more info about that. Plus, more catalytic converters have been taken <laughs> <laughs> from trucks here in Evansville. So apparently, oh, all of man. the all of the catalytic converter burglars haven't been caught. There's still some on the loose. We'll tell you more about that as well. Got a great show lined up. Well, yeah, it's Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino and your man D Hicks. Got our independent entrepreneur of the week this week eddie hickerson from hickerson veggies where to give you that we uh, play the interview with him so you can find out how you can get down with hickerson veggies and help out our newest entrepreneur of the week get his business off the ground and a whole lot more whatever else you want to hear let us know 812-303-5018 on our facebook page facebook.com slash live 999 wjcb <laughs> Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99. Let me know what you want to hear. 812-303-5018 on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB on the home of the independent artist and entrepreneur, the only station in the tri-state that, that supports the local talent and local business is the way we do it. If you are an independent artist or entrepreneur and you want to get your voice heard, get your music out there and get you some exposure, let us be the first one to help you with that. And all you have to do is hit us up at the email, ninoincognito at gmail.com with a brief description of what you got going on and an MP3 version of your song, preferably in radio edited form so I don't have to do no extra work. And if it's on point, we'll show us some love and you can be our next independent artist or entrepreneur of the week just like my man eddie hickerson this week what's good eddie what's going on my man man chilling chilling man so uh we got uh got i thought it was just hickerson veggies that you had going on because he's a funny you talking about a green thumb this man knows his way around some dirt I tell you right now, he can grow it. I've seen the, the, the what you got, the bell peppers and the green peppers. You got greens, you got cabbages out there, right? Yeah, we got a little bit of everything, man. So uh, we got uh, squash, zucchini, some tomatoes, bell peppers. Uh, we got a little bit of everything, man. But uh, moving forward, uh, we're going to just focus on your broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, and greens, I think. Are that's going to be our fine tune that's going to be our our major categories moving forward we're just going to focus on uh doing uh mass production of those so where's your farm located where's the farm uh right now uh my operations out in roberts kentucky uh you know a good friend of mine has some acres out there and she has 
been good enough to bless us with the opportunity to come out there, grab a few acres, and really uh, get our operation started. Right. That's a, that's a, it was going unused and decided to let you use it and make some money off of it? Yes, sir. Yes, hey, sir. that's outstanding. That's what I'm talking about. I took a chance on an entrepreneur, right? So how long you been in the veggie game? I mean, growing stuff. Were you always like the green thumb type? or No, actually, you know, I recently moved back from Seattle about three years ago, and when I first got back here, I kind of got into it, you know. So this is actually, we're going into year three. Uh, but business really only been established this year, but okay. year three of, of getting into the growing, understanding vegetables, and then, you know, trying to execute that on the mainstream. And where can we find like a place to buy uh, Hickerson veggies? You know oh, I mean? well, right now our website will be coming. It's under construction. It's being built right now. Uh, I just got some, some business partners that I linked up with in Washington state. So okay. we're actually going to come together and collab on some things. Uh, we actually have two companies, which is there's Hickerson Veggies, but there's also Little Farrell Love Cove. Mm -hmm. And we'll be actually, so Hickerson Veggies will actually be opening up mid September with our pumpkins. Okay. Yeah, so, All right. Yeah. Getting ready for the Halloween, for yeah. the fall season. Okay. Yeah. Smart moves. That's what I'm talking about. The smart moves. So, uh, uh, how does, how do you go from getting it? to the dirt are you selling it like on the back of the trucks are you going to get to the stores and trying to get it consigned are you going to the farmers markets how are you doing it you know man uh it's all been a learning curve uh because there's a lot of people actually believe it or not that's actually moving around in this industry so it's really about trying to figure out where you're gonna fit in and then you know just foot on the pedal right, in right. that area and so uh right now we're actually got a hot tunnel that's gonna be 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 being built here in the next few months. What's that? Do you say you're getting a what bill? A high tunnel. It's a grant that I received. Oh, okay, okay, uh, from okay. From a company called Black Soil, Kentucky, okay. uh, out in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. And so uh, that high tunnel, once it's built, that's already actually contracted out. Uh -huh. So uh, we'll we'll be pushing to them. And then uh, you'll be able to go into our website. Uh, we'll have what we call CSA. So those CSAs it pretty much breaks down into subscriptions. So you'll be right. able to go on there. Get a subscription, and then I will come drop off your veggies uh, uh, monthly or weekly, whichever you prefer. Oh, that's it right there. It's straight delivered to the door from the dirt to your refrigerator. I'm yes, telling sir. you. <laughs> on the table. So if you, if you could give anybody to like me, I got I got a grapevine that's growing out in my backyard that just came with the property and everything. You know, just, just growing wild and everything. But I've noticed that like beetles and stuff are coming and getting on the leaves. I mean, and they chew up them. They don't yeah. really get to the berries, to the grapes themselves, but they tear those leaves up. Like, when you look up under, like, the leaves, they, like, all clustered up under there. But is there any secret, anything, any tips you can give somebody to start to just even try to get those kind of bugs away from them so they don't just tear up? You know the crops because we tried it with the you know my wife and i we had like a little 10 by 10 little patch of dirt tried to get our little green thumb on we were successful like growing a couple tomatoes so you got some green some string beans and things like that you know what i mean but a lot of the leaves from the greens and the collards and stuff they got ate up by the bugs you know what right. I mean? so it isn't even like kind of safe non you know chemical pet pet friendly kind of pesticides maybe something you can use to like protect that grapevine other things like local you know, gardens, you know, little bitty gardens. Right. I'm glad that uh, you hit onto that point because we like to do everything as organic, as natural as possible. Right. right. And so, uh, but one of the things that I use, and it's the only thing that I use, and I use it up until the point they begin to bear fruit. And after they begin to bear fruit, I don't spray it anymore. Okay. But it is a herbicide, but it's called high yield. And it's really effective. You only apply it about four times throughout the growth season. And it pretty much keeps anything that will fly in and bite off where do you get this what is this uh i get i go through uh day's garden center uh which is in henderson kentucky okay but also there's a place down in hopkinsville called deerfield supply co they not that's the amish they not only because that's actually who i get a lot of my information from that's right, where i right. get all my supplies from you know that's all natural right yeah now. they right. can pretty much tell you any and everything right 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 they you stay know. close to the dirt you know what i mean they grow most of their stuff out honestly. right but as we move forward though uh like going into next year i'm going to try to go into straight organic Okay. And so I would like to get back with you and give you a better answer on oh, how yeah. you can organically stop those beetles uh, from eating it versus using a chemical. Okay, that's good. We're, we're more than welcome to have you back, man. You know, what I mean, good luck with you. So you got the website that's supposed to be coming out 
Yeah, and, and I just want to throw this out there too. So uh, in January, our website will be open uh, where you can go and purchase your Valentine's flowers for Valentine's Day. <laughs> so we'll be open in January for pre-order on Valentine's Day. So you're going to be getting into the flower game too? Yes, getting sir. And that website is littlelovefloweco.com. Okay. All right. So is, the, is it a different method for growing vegetables versus trying to grow flowers? Is it something different you could do? Or is, it, can, is it the same patch of grass, patch of land that you can use for both? Honestly, you know, what I learned is they kind of grow similar, but they kind of grow different. You know, uh, flowers have their own characteristics just like vegetables do. Right. But I, from, from my experience, I, I kind of find out that flowers are more enjoyable process it's 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 they're easy to tend to easy to do maintenance of course you know when you get into your roses and different uh varieties of flowers are a little difficult right, right. they can kind of be uh it can kind of get on your nerves man look i know that because we tried to put our little flower bed out in the front of the house just to try to beautify give it some curb appeal and they say but it's, i guess i didn't dig far enough into the soil you know what i mean and that gets when the roots started when they ran into some rocks <laughs> and it's right, not growing it's not right. because I guess I didn't plant them deep enough and then once they got deep and tried to they ran in it and they kind of killed them all so I figured you gotta I found that you gotta dig a little deep and see what's actually under your dirt <laughs> but yeah, you told man. me not to throw away I mean I asked you this question before about when we tried to clear out that original patch of grass that we had to start growing the tomatoes and the vegetables and all this stuff you told me not to throw away like the, the remnants of the grass and stuff that we pulled up and right. all that good stuff and why, why was that well, glass ki glass clippings is what we would consider organic matter, and any type of any type of organic matter is good for the soil, right? Because it's something that started there and it's returning back. Even if it had weeds in there, it, because it'll kill off, and it'll just enrich the soil. Because once you pull in weeds up by the roots and you let it just bake on the soil, it'll just disintegrate and die. And there shouldn't be any weeds coming back up to replace that. But, you know, like any farmer or any person who's just doing garden or whatever, you know, you got to get that old trusty hoe out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man, that's going to the highlight reel right there. Boy. <laughs> yeah, man, sometimes you got to get the trusty hoe out and get your hands dirty. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. <laughs> that's a good one. So be on the lookout, Hickers and Veggies. He said you're trying to get ready for the fall so you can get the pumpkins yeah, we, out we, there. We, we, you know, I've been tracking my pumpkins progress. They've been doing very well. So I, so come mid September, we're going to be harvesting pumpkins and we're going to be ready to sell pumpkins. All right, and we're going to keep up with you, man. You can bring us one of them, and we have a picture of it on the website. You can see all the fresh veggies that uh, Hickerson Veggies is going to be growing, and they get ready for the Valentine's Day season. They're going to yes, have flowers. And we're going to have everything. By that time, the website will be up. By that time, the website will stuff. be up. As a matter of fact, the website, both websites will be up. Mid by mid September. And what the website, what are the the, the names gonna be uh, the website? Little Love Flower Co uh -huh. dot com. And then it'll be HickersonVeggies.com. Hickerson Veggies and Little Love. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Be like, man, thanks for coming and kicking with us, I man. That's my man, man Ed, uh, uh, Eddie Hickerson of Hickerson Veggies. You know, be on the lookout. With the inter he's going to be our entrepreneur of the week all week long. You can check the replay of the video uh, of the interview in case you missed it. You know, just tuning in and everything. You can check the replay of the interview and get you some farming tips, some growth tips. You know, some simple little growth tips. You know what I mean? For your little garden or maybe if you want to start getting into planting. In the planting season and everything. <laughs> Say, no, we get about that trust at all. Uh, you know what I mean? Get you some farming tips, get you some gardening tips. You know what I mean? From your man, Eddie Hickerson. We're going to have him coming back on, you know, as often as possible because I'm trying to get my little yard back together, get my grapevine, get some tomatoes and all that good stuff going in as well. So, big ups to our entrepreneur of the week, Eddie Hickerson. Hickerson Veggies. Be on the lookout for that. Support us and we will support you. It's Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99. Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99, sponsored by Buds and Stuff on Washington and Bakey in the Raw Center here in Evansville. Order ahead or order online. Give them a call at 812-402-7783 or at spudsandstuff.com. That's spuds with a Z, spudsandstuff.com. Dot com order online home of the holy montana wow. and my favorite chicken bacon ranch <laughs> yeah, you mm. can check out the video on our facebook page me and d pay the visit over there the spuds and stuff you can check out in real time what the potatoes look like what the store looks like and everything see find out exactly what you're missing and find out how to wait get your way on over the spuds and stuff 
to get you one of those hungry men or that chicken bacon ranch or one of the other things that they have on that huge menu across yeah. them four digital screens. Yeah, <laughs> huge menu. Out there. Having a great show. Got all my man D Hicks, as usual, in the building. CEO of Urban Revolution Management in the building. What's good, D? Man, I'm bulletproof, Jack. Man, look. <laughs> I've been having to calm D down a little bit. Even having internet issues, women issues, crazy boob, crazy dude issues. Like, man, they, <laughs> you get hit from all sides around here. Damn, boy, got- <laughs> it's all crazy, man. Well, you know, hey, oh, it's all man. right, man. Keep your vest on. That's man, all I'm saying. Keep, keep the BS vest. The BS proof vest. That's what mm-hmm. I like to call it. You know what I mean? Let it bounce right on off you. You know what I mean? But uh, the baby has gotten into a little bit of trouble. He was talking about that. You know, what I mean, a lot of you know, a lot of uh, up and coming rappers usually have to pay in order to get in. You know, pay on performances, these right. concerts, festivals, things like that, just to get the music just to get the music started, all that kind right. of stuff. But the baby seen that ran into that problem as well. You know, they paid him to initially perform at this festival that he just performed. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out where it was. It's not to see what the, how successful of uh, Fitline, that's not it. But anyway, he was at this uh, last festival that he was performing at. And then in the area, I guess he had to be done by midnight. A lot of them have to be done by 11 o'clock. Yeah. Of those outdoor, out the hours, yeah. Them, the hours. Yeah. The hours. Yeah. The outdoor and festivals, man, you gotta be, you gotta be, uh, 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 aware of those noise ordinances, regulations, and things like that. Certain festivals, you know, they got to be shut down by eleven to accommodate. And some say midnight, depending on the contract. But if you do, you know, it's usually a happy fine and a follow it. Sometimes they would just shut the concert down. Yeah, they shut it down. I mean, they would sound it all. They would hit the power plug on yeah, you real man. quick, like Ooh. not one minute over. We're not going. But they gave the baby the option. They say, okay, you either shut it down now or you pay. A ten thousand dollar fine. Oh hell, ten thousand dollars ain't nothing. Jack. I know, right? And that's exactly what he did. He looked at the crowd. He was like, "Man, you know." So uh, it's either they say I got eight minutes left, or I got to shut it down by twelve, which he knew he wasn't going to be right. done in eight minutes, or they were going to pay the ten thousand ten thousand dollar fine. He said, "What do you think I should do?" And they cry, "Yeah, pay it, pay it, yeah, man." So you <laughs> had to get. Yeah, so that's, you know, it's easy to do when you know, right? When you the baby, you man. know, I mean, got that kind of money. I'm, I'm, right. I'm sure he got paid and, like maybe a hundred, hundred fifty. And I'm sure the promoter works somewhere where they probably wouldn't have on that, Jack. And, you know, probably didn't, probably they probably ain't paid pay nothing at all. Anyway, right. I don't know how long he went over. You right. know, I'm, I'm sure he probably didn't go over like no hour or nothing like that. He probably no. went over like 15, 15 20 minutes, 20 minutes, something minutes like right? That, you know, and then, but that's one of the things about arriving at early the scene. on time. You know, I, I, I guess that that that. Fashionable lake thing, you know, when you're the headliner of the show, even our own headliner, Max, you know, but that boy, Max, he did that at our, at our, <laughs> at our showcase when we had a, oh, we made his fashionably late entrance, him and Nick and Davis, but that's because they had another showcase right. that they was out doing that thing on, you know what I mean? So it, it happens like that. But sometimes when you all, when you arrive late and you start your show late, you got to pay that penalty. You know what I mean? They not playing them gym, the noise ordinances, especially in outdoor venues, you know, in neighborhoods. It wasn't like they was at Burning Man or what's the other one where they do out in the in the, in the field. You had concert Coachella, Coachella, things like that, yeah. where they had the concerts and all that stuff in outdoor, outdoor areas where nobody's around. You can have those going for days on end, music, music playing no problem. No but when you got these, you know, neighborhood style Right. Festivals, Festivals where you know they're surrounded by housing and people that actually have jobs that have to get up you know, in the morning, you know. What I mean, it probably wasn't like right next door to residential, but probably close enough where you know the police had to step in, like, look, hey, midnight, you got eight, yeah, ten yeah, minutes, shut down, down. Shut down. You know, we, got, we got people, you know, what I mean anything, anything over, we're gonna charge you ten thousand dollars. And I don't know if it was like ten thousand dollars per minute. No, it wasn't that. No, it had to be probably fifteen. They had to do it in quarter hours, I bet. You think if so? It's a, if it's a city if it's city bros, nine times out of ten, I would think it has to be by by a quarter. I thought would I would think it would be by the hour, but escalated by the hour. Like man, you got that if you an hour over you got ten thousand dollars. If you anything over that first hour, that's gonna be like twenty five thousand dollars. That'd be too easy. Everybody do it then, Jeff. You think so? Yes, sir. But I mean that's that's two hours. So that's why, like you said, you probably didn't go no more than fifteen, twenty minutes over his performance. But I mean, if it's coming out of the promoter's pockets, that's a lot of money to come out of the promoter's pocket. Yeah, you know what man, I mean? So I'm they sure got, they you got to some... make sure, you know, your, everything you you doing is yeah. on point and stopping on time. Because you not only you got to pay the city fine, you know, for the concert going over, you got to pay people 
who are running over. the concert for staying over. Because exactly. this ain't their concert day. This concert was supposed to have been over at midnight. I was supposed to be breaking my equipment right. down, getting ready, ready to go. go. So make sure. every minute over that is cost to their promoter money, 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 money. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess the baby decided to eat that out of his own of pocket. His own that pocket. little $10,000. Right. But I mean, you know, that's nothing that you, I don't think you would really want to make a habit of doing. out of doing. Because a lot of cities won't let you come in and get that permit if they know that you got to have it a breaking noise ordinance law. If you come right. in as a nuisance or if you bring drama with your concerts every time you come, you know what I mean? Some people, right. they won't even let you perform. They're like, nope, we don't want to have nothing to do. None with- of that back in blood, <laughs> baby. You know what I mean? We don't want to have nothing. NWA used to get banned back in the day a lot of, a yeah, lot of places. Nope, we don't want that. that with the F the police song and all that kind of stuff, man. There was a lot of places. They like, like, don't perform that song. Well, with Strange Fruit, who was that the same Strange Fruit back in the day? Strange Fruit hanging from the, the papa tree. She got banned, you know, for, in a lot of concerts from uh, from singing that song. But when they, uh, you know, as soon as she opened up mic and started singing it, cops just started running up on her. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, Jack. Sometimes it just is worth taking that risk because you got to put on the show for them. You got to get the people what, what they, they want, want. You know what I mean? If mm-hmm. you want them to come out and see you again. So, did you ever, have you ever been to a concert that went way over time? How long over time? Let us know. 812 or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB. It's Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino and your man D Hicks, sponsored by Spuds and Stuff. Urban Revolution Radio, it's your boy Nino and your man D Hicks, sponsored by Spuds and Stuff, broadcasting live from the Spuds and Stuff studios. Spuds and Stuff is on uh, Washington and Bakey in the Ross Center. Give them a call, 812 402 7783, or online at spudsandstuff.com that's spuds with the z spudsandstuff.com and if you're an independent artist or entrepreneur like my man eddie hickerson of hickerson veggies and you want to get your business promoted and become our next entrepreneur artist of the week all you have to do is send us a clean mp3 version of your music and a brief description of your business and if it's on point We'll show it as much love as humanly possible. And you could be our next independent artist or entrepreneur of the week, like Eddie Hickerson of Hickerson Veggies. And we got Saturday Night Live is in uh, the news again. One of my favorite shows. Yeah, I've man. Certainly live, man. I've watched it, man, since mm-hmm. I was a little new. Created, the, world. created when the first year I was born, man. 1975. You yeah. know what I mean? I love Saturday Night Live. It's been some bad seasons. I had when they had I watched when they had the legends on there, man. Yeah, Eddie Murphy, yeah. Chris Chevy Farley. Chase, Dan man, Dan I watched Roy, when they had the legends you know, on there, man. They, the new there's some new legend. Keenan. He is yeah. the longest serving Saturday Night Live. The black kid. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Longest deal. serving Saturday Night Live Didn't know this. cast member in history. Didn't know this. Long, I mean, the top, he's one of the head writers on hmm. Saturday Night Saturday Night Live, this right now, would not be what it is without Keenan. Um, uh, uh, yeah, he's uh, funny, though. You know what I mean? Uh, Keenan, what's his name? Uh, Williams, isn't it? No, 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 because uh, he's from Keenan and Kel. <laughs> I, I forgot. I keep, I keep forgetting what his name is. Uh, cause I want I was about to say Keenan Michael Key, but that's that's not him. You know what I mean? It's uh, cause Keenan Michael Key, that's from uh, uh Key and Peel. Uh, what's Keenan? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Keenan Thompson. That's what his last what name. What I said, Williams. Did you said Williams? I was close. <laughs> he said you <he> was close. T U W. Say yeah, okay, yeah. You about two, two, three letters off. He said T U W. Even skipped the letter to try. Yeah, to I did, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good, yeah. Keenan Keenan Thompson, one of the longest serving members on Saturday Night Live, you know what I mean. But also Michael Che, one of the funniest members to serve on Saturday Night Live, is coming under a lot of scrutiny from Trump supporters because they're hurt, but her bad, they still hurt her, though, and not just at Michael Che. You oh, know, oh Michael man! Said, you know, called, called him, uh, uh, Alex Baldwin, president. man, is the man. You know that, man, right? With the Donald, Donald Trump uh, yeah. invitation, <laughs> I'm telling you, he did the best Donald Trump, one of man. the best presidential, one of the best presidential imitations of any character on Saturday Night man, Live. Man, did you know me because I mean? they used to even back in the day. I think uh, Chevy Chase used to do uh, Gerald Ford. With the clumsiness, tripping all over the yes. stage and everything like yes, that. Yes. Then you had the, the 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 Bill Clinton era. Those yes. were some of the funniest ones. Those you had like three ones. of them that had doing Bill Clinton mm-hmm. back in the day. And now you got with the Donald Trump, Ali Baldwin taking it to a whole new level. 
uh, with the Donald Trump impersonation because I mean he's got it like down. At, you know what I mean? So, but also Stephen Colbert coming under you know from Trump supporters saying that they're mad that they make they're making so much fun of Donald Trump that they want these shows canceled. They've been reporting them to the FCC. They Saturday Night Live has been one of the most enduring sketch TV comedy shows of all times, according to the showbiz sheet sheet. And say the show is responsible for many careers. Eddie Murphy, Chris Farley, Will Ferrell. It says known for the show Lampoons. But a recent report from the FCC details just how far some viewers are willing to go to let their voices be heard when you insult somebody that they like. It's yeah. always funny when it's not when somebody it, that when they, it's somebody that they don't you know, care for. Right, you know, you know, Trump made fun of reporters. <laughs> I'm he made you. fun of anybody of color, creed, Longer whatever. But it was okay. Clinton or yeah. making fun of Obama. It was okay. Maybe, they, 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 they were loving him. Oh, right. you make fun of Trump. Oh, oh they, they butt hurt right now. Yes, sir. The FCC communication. Uh, the FCC released a communication report in mid July that many of the complaints received regarding Saturday Night Live. And certain jokes made by various comedians includes uh, uh, complaints that date back to 2017 and in depth of many fans' feelings for certain political figures. They say the comedians make repeated appearances in a report, including a Saturday Night Live writer, performer Michael Che, who is the longtime host of Weekend Update. Him okay. and uh, Colin Jones. Colin Jones, right? The black dude, right? No, Colin Jones is the dude. other white dude. Don't they? But it, you know, the weekend update is the, the mock news segment. Yeah, the mock yeah, news segment that, that they do over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And got they got you. this one segment that they actually do that's actually hilarious where they write surprise jokes for each other that mm -hmm. the other one don't, don't know, know what's going to happen. So right. it's like they say some of the most embarrassing things because the <laughs> other, you know, Michael J., he always writing some kind of racist joke that uh, right. Colin Jones got. And you can see Colin Jones just getting red in the face as he's, he's reading off the cue card in real time. But still had to read it. He's like, oh, I can't say this. Oh, man. <laughs> so they go back and forth on it like that. And then, you know, Colin Jones, he has set up Michael Che, you know, making like racist remarks against, you know, Donald Trump, Donald Trump and Bill Clinton, you know, all the white, you know, politicians, and things like that. So well, they go back and forth well, setting Clinton each other was up. was a Democrat, wasn't he? Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. They, they would set each other up, but the only ones getting butt hurt about it are the uh, ones Trump, Trump supporters. supporters. You know what I mean? You can't make fun of Trump, especially when you're telling the truth about him. Right. You know, that's what they hate. You tell the truth about Trump, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just, you can't judge him on the truth. What the <laughs> right. <laughs> Even if it's funny, but, you know, I don't think the FCC are really going to take it any far, far, you know, what I mean, they haven't broken any kind of rules, you know, and no profanity, undue profanity, no kind of vulgarness, or you know, uh, overt sexuality of any right. kind. No. And even then, they're way past the, the guidelines for that since they yeah. start at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, so they're past those, you know, they're, they're, late, they're late night hours, you man. know, so they can basically almost do everything they want except for X rated sex, right? You know, at that time. <laughs> <laughs> at that time, and maybe you can't drop the f bomb. You could probably get away with one f bomb per show by accident in a live. I don't know, Jack. You can't. Because... They've done it. They've done it. You can get away with the one. Could I? I'm trying to think who somebody dropped South the f bomb. Park, homie dropped the s bomb. Oh yeah, they did it like no. 39 times. They, no, and they, no they more summoned, than that, Jack. They summoned the devil when they did it. Man, I remember did that it. episode. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I remember that episode. But yeah, but you no, know, these things like that, different rules relate to different shows at different times in different regions. Yeah. You know, Saturday Night Live, Live is filmed in New York, live audience, you know, things happen, you know, so they're allowed a little bit more leeway when it comes to their broadcast, you know, than some other shows who actually have, you know, directors of cut. Oh, we're going to do that again. We're, you know, purposely, you know, filming things versus something that just happens impromptu. Mm -hmm. on live television so you got a lot of people getting butt hurt about that i don't really think the fcc is going to do anything about it say showrunners reportedly have the policy in place already. that governs behavior from guests on the show some guests have notoriously been banned from ever appearing on the show again you know i think it was one dude he was coming in like throw up in one of the it was like a a, a musical guest that would come in and like throw up and defecate in the green rooms all the time they it was like oh my god i i, I can't remember who the, who that was but he was he got banned from from saturday night Live, you know what I mean? just, just 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 for being disgusted you know so but this just making fun of an ex-president oh, even yeah. a current president you know what i mean just because you don't you know like his political opinions or that's not enough to get you banned off a show it's not like that you know 
libeling him or slandering him in any way. This right. is just comedic, you know, satire. Right. You know, take it with a grain of salt. If you don't like it, don't listen. Yeah, <laughs> you can say it in the channel. So don't waste the FCC's time with that, especially when you got a video of like Lil Nas X. Ooh, that Lil Nas X video, boy. Man, it got on my nerves, cuz. Man, if, if it wasn't for YouTube to be able to get away with making videos like that, that's some, that would never get broadcast on regular TV. I don't care what time of day it is. If that's three, four, five, you could never show that on regular TV. As much never. Edited, did you... <laughs> <laughs> Never. So I wonder if Saturday Night Live is going to let him come do a live performance of that new, uh, what's it called, Industry Baby There's song. No way. Ooh, cause There's he no did. way they can edit it. Man, hey, we'll see. We'll see. Saturday Night Live has been known to break boundaries and push limits and look like Lil Nas X is trying to do the exact same oh, thing did, Jack. with that in Industry Baby one. So we'll see if they're going to collab and let Lil Nas X come back you know what i mean so I, didn't, I don't think he got any like complaints about him not coming back the last time he was on the lgbt community that really came out and supported him when he was on the show doing this thing said he was strong he was brave all that good stuff you know what yeah. i mean so he just might make it back on you yeah know? but this man he's really pushing the, the boundaries of his his followers right now with that video right now so we'll see how that happens saturday night live i don't think you're worried about uh being discontinued or being canceled from the fcc just for making fun of donald trump i don't think that's gonna happen but maybe if you let that little Nas x get back on with that video boy you he might be in danger <laughs> let us know have you seen that little Nas x video what do you think of it 812-303-5018 or on our facebook page Facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB. Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99, broadcasting live from the Spuds and Stuff Studios. Spuds and Stuff located on Bakey and Washington in the Ross Center on Evansville's east side. Give them a call and order ahead or order online 812-402-7783 or on F uh, Sp uh, SpudsInStuff.com on the website with Spuds with a Z spudsinstuff.com and order that holy montana with the andouille sausage the pulled pork the chicken double extra bacon because they didn't have the brisket it usually come with brisket too chicken you know so you got the extra chicken on them what else did they throw on that it was uh the, the, the fried sausage onions. bacon oh the man fried onions, everything they had back <laughs> <laughs> oh man look like if it was on the menu they threw it on deep potato like hey you want this you want this you want this <laughs> man what yeah threw it on there you can always build your own spud too that's one of the fun parts about it you can put on it what you want on it take off what you want to take off you know it's your choice your taste bud so check them out spuds and stuff out there on washington and bakey and as usual got my man d hicks in the building what's good D? what's going on this one jay man chilling 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 let them know if you are an independent artist or entrepreneur and you want to get your music or business heard here on live 99 send us an email at nino incognito at gmail.com we'll have a link in the description below on our facebook page and if it's on point we'll show it as much love as humanly possible just like this week's entrepreneur of the week eddie hickerson of Hickerson Veggies, entrepreneur farmer out there in Henderson, Henderson, uh, uh, Kentucky. Uh, speaking of uh, entrepreneurial music, uh, uh, I guess he's not really an entrepreneur. Well, yeah, he's still an entrepreneur. Yeah, most definitely. He's yeah, he's definitely still an entrepreneur. He's not an yeah, independent he's artist. Not an independent artist. So, yeah, he's but he's, he's still an entrepreneur. Kanye right. West, you know what I mean? The entrepreneur for his uh, uh Yeezys, mm -hmm. Yeezy brand of shoes, Yeezy brand of music, Yeezy brand of clothes, all that good stuff. Right. He just did that uh, release album party, partial album release. Well, not an album release, more of a listening, listening party, sample right. listening party, because the album's still not done yet. You know? So he was just, he, that people, <laughs> he teased the crowd. People paid to come hear an unfinished listening party and watch Kanye West listen to his own music on the stadium speaker. That's really what it was. They paid for it because he didn't rap anything. He, didn't it. he was just up there bobbing to his own music, doing his thing. You know what I mean? People actually paid to come get the first listen to the Donda album, which is named after his, you know, uh, deceased mom. You know, mm -hmm. mom passed away, so he named his album after her. You know, but it's not finished yet. So he just did that release party in the the Mercedes Benz Stadium. When that where it was? Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, he was at the at the Mercedes Mercedes Benz Stadium. And I guess he liked it so much that uh, he's not leaving. 
He did. Yeah. The next day, he was apparently seen walking around the stadium in the same outfit that he was wearing at the album release party the night hmm. before during the soccer wow. game because he had to have a studio. He had a studio created living quarters and even had a chef with a kitchen preparing his meals inside mercedes-benz stadium so basically he's moved in he's not gonna, just like uh, reggie miller moved into what yeah. that burger king what was that burger king taco bell what? taco bell whatever, right. <laughs> whatever right, it was right. the restaurant he had moved into the mercedes-benz stadium set up shop and said he's i wonder how much that's costing oh, he got enough money man look I, I guess, you know, but, you know, Trump Tower was probably one of those expensive. He's been known to stay up in the Trump Towers a lot, things like that. You know, he's a big Trump supporter, Trump mm -hmm. fan, you know. But what, you know, just, I guess everything is publicity when it comes yeah, it is with Kanye to Kanye West. Right but now. sometimes I just think he's a little bit just off, just a little bit weird, you know, just one of, just like Elon Musk. Some of the Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, when you get that rich, that successful, and, you know, you're not, you're not confined by the restraints. Of not having money, having to answer to people, having to, you know, be, uh, I guess, civilized mm -hmm. <laughs> in some kind of way, you know, when your money is on kind of like a perpetual money machine like that, you can really do what it is that you want to do. And he was seen walking around uh, in the same outfit that he was wearing uh, the night before at the, the listening party, but with an added stocking cap over his head for some reason, like a nylon stocking. So you can recognize it was him? How can. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me, Jack? <laughs> so, yeah, so I guess if, if, if that was it. But, yeah, he's walking around with a nylon stocking over his head in the same bright red new release Yeezy jacket in the in the uh, 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 unseasonably warm weather. No, it's too warm for him to have it on anyway. So it can't right. be nobody else but Kanye. Nobody else would be, you know, really called dead walking around in there. Right, exactly. right, that bright right. red with the bright red this and then. Nah, that's that's. It looks like he looks like he's walking in two bright red trash bags. I'm yeah. not a fan of this Yeezy brand. Of course, <laughs> I'm proud of my man for doing his thing. Right, yeah. You know, I never owned a pair of Rockefeller nothings. No. You know what I mean? I can't see myself paying three, four, five hundred dollars for a pair of jeans. You know what I mean? With my mortgage, <laughs> right. <laughs> Ain't even that. You know, if I had money like that, I don't even know if I would do it then. You know, but when you're coming out with just shock value, shock effect. Okay, you want as much eye catching. Right. Eye popping stuff as possible. And that's about as eye catching as you can get. He looks like the Kool Aid man with a stocking cap on his head. <laughs> big, bright red, puffy coat, big, bright red, puffy pants, the big, bright, bulky, Yeezy shoes, and all right. that good stuff. So he's apparently like the vibe in the Mercedes Benz Stadium so much that he has decided to move in. So it says unclear if any totally new tracks. We'll come from Kanye Stadium visit. I don't know if he's just in post production working on what he's already he probably finished. Probably in post production, you know. Say, so, uh, but he he certainly has a unique way of getting things done. Standing out there in the middle of the field. <laughs> How much did just, tickets cost for that event? It was like between fifty and seventy five dollars. You know, fifty dollars way up there, seventy five. I think maybe even a hundred back. You know, down close. Right. Front end stage on VIP, that kind of stuff. But you know, this was not a concert. It was just a jam, not even a jam set, just a listening party. He played his own music. massive music over there. What y'all think it is? <laughs> and just nodded, and everybody else was nodding their head off. You know, so I guess if you paid fifty to seventy five dollars for a ticket, you got to pretend like you like it. Bro, you, you know? got to, Jack. Yeah. You invested. <laughs> you invested. Because, man, you know, it's not like he fooled anybody. You know, it wasn't like people thought they were going to a concert and he just played music and just stood there. No, people knew exactly what they were coming in to listen to. He mm -hmm. wanted to hear how his music sounded in a stadium, and he charged people to come in and listen to the thing with him. You know, and it... <laughs> Hmm. It, it's still mind blowing to me right now. So he that he's decided to move in and they let him do it. I mean, they've actually set up living quarters for him. They've set up a studio for him, and they've got his own personal chef in there. Making it's all food. right. So man. It's like the John Wick. The John Wick movie was the number three Parabellum when he was like the when the, the dude went to the Hotel Continental yeah. running from John Wick. Yeah, he was like a man could stay here and not eat the same meal twice in a year. <laughs> so I it. guess. He's treating the Mercedes-Benz Stadium as his own hotel continental of sorts. So, 
Let's know. Are, we, are you waiting on that uh, new Kanye West album to come out? Donda, let us know. 812-303-5018 or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB. Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99, sponsored by Spuds and Stuff, broadcasting live from the Spuds and Stuff studios. Spuds and Stuff located on Washington and Bakey Roads here in Evansville. You can give them a call and order ahead at 812-402-7783 or order online at spudsandstuff.com. And if you are an independent artist or entrepreneur and you would like to have your music or business exposed here on Live 99, then we'd like to give you as much help as we possibly can. All you have to do is hit us up in our email, ninoincognito at gmail.com with a clean mp3 version of your music and a brief description of your business and if it's on point you just might be our next independent artist or entrepreneur of the week just like eddie hickerson of hickerson veggies you know what i mean fresh veggies big tomatoes big watermelons patches and greens all kind of good stuff he's going to he's even going to get into the flower game yes, so he's he going is. to be growing flowers and southern flowers just in time for valentine's day and yes, all of that is. good stuff so getting this green thumb on it he's going to try to get him back onto the show to try to give some more of those gardening tips that he got because i'm on my my uh my grapevine is just going through hell right now i try to you know, save it and try to cultivate it, try to put the fertilizer on it, throw some love, the, the 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 natural uh the natural uh bug repellent stuff. But mm -hmm. them beetles, man, them green shiny back beetles, man, those things are ferocious. Right, man, I got to get something strong to get those those beetles for next season because man, this this year's crops on that uh that grapevine is done. I even had to tear down our little uh, tomato and, uh, patch and all that stuff. He's also getting to be honey too. Be honey too? Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah, he's also getting to the honey game. All right. So big things coming from Eddie Hickerson on the Hickerson veggies, flowers, and honey. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned, you know what I mean, to get your fresh veggies right here. And in other news, speaking of uh 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 veggies, I guess that Mercedes Benz is trying to come out with a veggie car. A biodegradable car was made out of what's called biofiber. Totally biodegradable car. No more. Mercedes-Benz is trying to do away with the car junkyards, mm -hmm. all of that good stuff. It said right. the, the car will actually be totally biodegradable. It says it's made from biofiber. Let's see what it says right here. It says biofiber was created by scientists in the lab, which is used to grow back hair that you might have lost over the years. But they found a way to make it into a fiber that's so strong that it can be molded into bodies of vehicles. Wow. Man, that's kind of nuts right now, Joe. It is. Say so the Mercedes, uh, the Mercedes model, the model made by Mercedes weighs only 875 pounds compared to the original 1,000 pound design when it was made, it was made by carbon fiber. You know, wow. which is really like the lightest car, the lightest material that most cars. Yeah, but we like, never see that here in the mirror. I'm not. I, I I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, we're really having a real green initiative here in America. I could really see, just like Tesla. People really didn't think Teslas would catch on here in America. We thought right. we were going to be such, you know, a uh, uh, gas guzzlers. They really thought diesel, you know, diesel engines for personal use were going to catch on a lot. But even Mercedes Benz, which is like the master of the diesel engine for right. personal cars they have a lot of regular eco-friendly cars on the road they use mm -hmm. regular gas biodegradable gas that ethanol gas now they're trying to make their whole cars out of that biofiber said biofiber is stronger and lighter than the material used for the exterior of most cars and said so the model made by mercedes uh, mercedes benz is like 125 pounds minimum lighter but it says since biofiber hasn't been created yet in mass it's really not much more that they can you know tell you about it you know ex except that it's probably the next wave of the future the chemical bond is called bio nectar four five three four wow but the concept card that they made for it though man i, I was watching a youtube video of it right. let me see if i can where's that uh 10 cars that's uh, that's the carbon fiber one but uh it's called the mercedes-benz biome b-i-o-m-e and it looks like a it looks like a pretty cool car i'm trying to find it again if i could uh no that's not it no those are the carbon fiber ones but it's actually a pretty cool looking car you know you can tell that it's meant to be you know it's made for the future you right. know those concept cars and things like that they don't look like anything all right here it is hit images of the uh the biofiber car 
And uh, this is the back of the Mercedes Benz one right here. And, you know, they got the, AM, the AMG, AMG kit right. and all that stuff on and everything. But the, the body of the car, you know, a lot of these cars okay. look like Knight Rider. On the inside, yeah. I mean, they look like really hollow. They got the four electric engines on. There's no, you know, no, uh, 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 what they say, internal combustion. It all it's four electric engines on it. Totally made out of carbon, uh, uh, biofiber. Totally biodegradable. You know, you can just set it. You know, when you when they crush it down, it can even be used as mulch. <laughs> mm. Once they take the engine out and take the batteries out, the lithium batteries, gotcha. all that, they can break the car down, use it as mold, refiber it, you know, Re remold it. Very Recycle. easy to reuse. Gotcha. You know, so I think that's probably going to be the next wave. I can see that happening because it's, it, it, they say it is just as strong as steel. So safety won't be an issue. No. I would get one. My goal is to get as, as, as close to all electric, all solar as possible i want an electric car i want to get some solar panels on my house you know what i mean i want to have everything as much electric i want to reduce my carbon footprint to as close to zero as possible and i think this will really be because carbon fiber is really kind of it's, it's not really super biodegradable but it is made out of carbon it is a biodegradable you know product but it still has to go through a lot of other processes uh, before it can actually be thrown yeah, into the, true. you know, so they got, they, ho they have a whole bunch of new, I saw like these heavy machinery videos where they can crunch cars to like grains of Grain, sand. Yeah, now, yeah I've seen those before. Wow. Man, I mean, talking about wow. throw it to the comments so they can just turn the car into dust, take the engine out, turn the car into dust and remanufacture it from scratch to whatever they want it right. to be. So the recycling technology has just grown in leaps and bounds over the past 10 years and it's coming over to the cars now a lot of these once these electric cars start catching on you know a lot more you know we're going to see a lot of these green made cars green fiber cars you know uh i guess you know like a carbon fiber that's the lightest thing made right now but what's the other one thing they spoke it wasn't a uh, bamboo that they was made oh man i was thinking that it was uh It'll come to me. I hate when I have brain farts like this, but I was just <laughs> watching the video about it. Where they were just, they were trying to make it so that these cars they they really only oh it was it was a, a a car where they said the engine would have to be rebuilt after fifty thousand years, and it's a foreign car. I think it's the, the yeah, I think it's is it the 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 Keurig egg. Because Keurig, they the Keurig egg, they actually make years. a supercar too. Fifty thousand miles after fifty thousand miles. They actually, the, the car is like energy efficient, super solar power, the battery, all the good stuff. But the, the by being a supercar to reach a speed of, it's like zero to 60 in like 1.7 seconds. Wow. An electric car, but the stress that it puts on the engine, you have to have the engine totally rebuilt because it's a sealed, you know, sealed, right, engine, sealed hydraulic inside. and all that good stuff. You know, it's a sealed engine. Where you, that it doesn't have to be recharged or anything like that. It just runs. But after that 50,000 mile mark, the end, you have to take it to the shop and actually have it totally rebuilt. You know? <laughs> so if you can afford to have a supercar like that in the first place, right. having it, you know, it, you don't have to take it in for oil change. You don't have to take it in for minor repairs, nothing like that. But at that 50,000 mark, just take it in, have the engine rebuilt, and take out the parts. Yeah, put the armor lead, though, Jeff. Man, but if you can afford the one point two million for it in the first place, it ain't getting it, it's maintaining it. <laughs> yeah. So they wouldn't give it to you if you didn't have enough money to maintain it. So but I would get an all electric uh uh biofiber bio car. Mm -hmm. I, I would like that. You know, I'm I'm trying to get as green as possible. Are you going green? Are you a green person or do you like the belching smoke? Of the diesel engines coming out <laughs> when you hit that gas. But man, I hate getting behind trucks like oh, that. Oh man, dude. they get to rattling jack. Man, thing. especially the ones that have the pipes on the bottom back of the car. Now, if yeah, you don't man. have that black smoke coming out of your truck or your car, how are your pipes going up? Have them facing up. Don't have them poking out on the side. And yeah. when you hit that black smoke, you putting black smoke all on the side of my car right. and all that stuff. And breathing. Man, then have you have your air conditioning on, inhaling all that black smoke. Come on, y'all. Yeah. You're going to do all that. Have your pipes pointing up. I hate inhaling all that black smoke. But I want to go green. I want me an electric car. Anybody want to donate or sponsor yeah. me for an electric car? I'm more than <laughs> I will more than welcome it. Let me know. 812-303-5018 on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB. Urban Revolution Radio with your boy Nino on Live 99. Let us know what you want to hear. 812-303-5018 on our Facebook page. Facebook.com slash live 999 WJCB. And as usual, we're broadcasting live. 
from the Spuds and Stuff Studios. Spuds and Stuff located on Bakey and Washington in the Ross Center, home of the Holy Montana and the Hungry Man Spud. Two of the biggest potatoes meals you'll ever have in your life. But I like the chicken bacon ranch and the barbecue spud, but they also have stuff at Spuds and Stuff. They got the pitas, the salads. Uh, what they got the, the brisket supposed to be coming back yeah. after that. The fountain drinks. Sam oh, I love that. Philly, the Sam, the Phil, all that good stuff. So check them out. Spuds and stuff on Bakey and Washington, right there in the Raw Center. You can't miss it. Tell them Nino sent you. And if you would like to be our next independent artist or entrepreneur of the week, all you have to do is hit us up on our email at ninoincognito at gmail.com with a brief description of your business or a clean MP3 version of your music. And if it's on point, we'll show it as much love as humanly possible. And you could be our next independent artist or entrepreneur of the week. I saw a little girl, and she, she was kind of our impromptu independent entrepreneur. Of, yeah, yeah, selling lemonade. Huh? Yeah, a little Brooklyn that was selling lemonade 50 cent a cup over there on Illinois and Weinbach, like, like a couple blocks uh, west of oh, Weinbach yeah. on Illinois. I had the little pick up. I was dropping my father in law. Over at one of his buddy's house over there, and I happened to pass by the little lemonade stand. I mean, and it was an elaborate setup. You can check out the picture of it on our Facebook page at Live Nine 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 WJCB. I mean, I guess her uh, mom and dad, you know, they put up the the big pink banner and everything, Brooklyn's That's lemonade stuff. and all that good stuff. She had a nice presentation. Was making the lemonade out there, freshly squeezed and everything. Oh, wow. Sugar man, and it was good. Oh, nice man. sized cups too. It wasn't like those itty bitty, itty bitty one sip cups. Man, nice sample. So, big up to Brooklyn, our entrepreneur of the weekend <laughs> that was out there on, uh, on, on Illinois and Wine Bar. Hopefully, she'll be out there again making her money. And that's what we like to see. We like to see entrepreneurs of all ages. You know, I'm expecting the younger you get them to know the power of the dollar to be able to go into business for yourself. You know what I mean? You know, be your own boss yes. and, and, and understand the value of hard work. Man, that's, that's, a, that's a lesson they carry with them for the rest of their lives so it's big us to brooklyn uh, over there uh, with her lemonade stand hope you sell a million cups over there uh as far as the lo other local news one person was sent to the hospital after a shooting that occurred in a home on evans in evansville on saturday it said the vanderburg county uh sheriff's dispatch says crews responded to a report of shots fired on the 1800 block of mcconnell avenue mm -hmm. just before 2 20 p.m do you know where mcconnell avenue is yeah right here off of uh off of cover oh what's close by us right here yeah right off cover runs right there where rent one is and uh that oh church. yeah Mitch, I, and I, every time right i here. pass by and i think about it too miss mcconnell avenue yeah. <laughs> okay i know exactly where we go right where it breaks off it i don't yeah. know it's right there everywhere. i know exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. now so they were at the uh, 1800 block of McConnell Avenue said, according to the Evansville Police Department, an armed suspect entered the residence and exchanged gunfire with the homeowner. Say the suspect was shot and taken to the hospital. And so officers tell uh, the extent of the person's injuries are unknown at this time, but he is expected to survive. So I guess he got more than he bargained for. Bargain thought he was going in, Rambo, and right. getting shot himself. <laughs> yeah. So you got to understand, you know what I mean? I am all for gun ownership, you know what I mean, home protection and all of that good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think we should be Dirty Harry out in the street trying to turn it into the OK Corral Wild West right. with guns all in your hips and AKs and ARs and all no, no, no. But home protection, somebody cross your boundaries, man, you have the right to protect your home and your property and your people right. by any means necessary. And he did just that. So, hey, we, I, that's one of those examples of why I'm in favor of responsible Gun ownership. Responsible gun ownership. But also in uh, local news, the catalytic converter thief is back here in Evansville. They took some uh truck to some catalytic converters off of FP Kelly's and Sons work vehicles. Say so the report showed the incident happened at, at between eleven Friday night and eight AM Saturday morning, I guess between their closing hours wow. Friday and opening on Saturday morning. And the estimate loss estimated loss is about a thousand dollars so i guess Man. it was just the one that they took off because that's how much it's going to cost with just that one to get a catalytic converter oh, i got like a fat red uh, no no <laughs> so yeah them catalytic converters are quite uh, you know quite the, the nuisance and kind of expensive to replace you know and it's the platinum yeah it's all the platinum that's that's the, 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 you know just really cost it you know and it right. just cost it all the money for it so but they had the thing to say if you have a garage 
that you have access to if you're a business owner or even a personal you know personal car owner if you have access to a garage and you don't have anybody like like monitoring your vehicles you know a security guard that walks around right you know your property flood like some kind of alarm or alert system put your vehicles up you know and put mm -hmm. your vehicles in the garage in your main don't trust that nobody's going to mess with your car because you're on a bright lit parking lot no no these thieves are getting real bold yes, right they now. Are. They've stolen from churches. They've stolen from schools. They've stolen from private businesses, and they've stolen from homes. Canada's even thought about start implementing social, uh, like uh, serial numbers, right. to start putting on their catalytic like converters to match the stone. vehicles because it's just that that valuable right. of a commodity right now. So we see how it's going right now. So you be like you got the the, the super flood lights. On your garage, you and your cousin are usually still here. Somebody's always here watching. You got nosy neighbors out there. So that's kind of the best setup right there right. other than putting in the garage. I don't have a garage myself, but I got like the trifecta of nosy neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah everybody got, everybody, I only got nosy neighbors on. You know, I got them. Right. I parked right under the street light on mine. Plus, my car sits real low to the ground. So yeah. if you were trying to get my catalytic to convert, I mean, you'd have to bring out some jacks. Some saws, all that good stuff, and not like you just gonna roll on your back and slide underneath right. and just sure. take it off. You know what I mean? This, this, that's why they're doing it to mostly trucks. You know, trucks because they're lifted high off the ground. They really don't have to worry about the jacks, the noise that a jack, a hydraulic jack, would make. One of those heavy duty one and a half ton or two and a half ton jacks. All they have to do is get on their back, roll underneath that, cut that little catalytic convert off, right. and be on that business. So don't make it easy for the thieves. If you have any kind of place where you can store your vehicles or any kind of way to cut off the underside of your vehicles in any kind of way, whether it's putting like barriers around your vehicles. I've seen mm -hmm. people do that. Yeah. Put like uh, wooden barriers or metal barriers around the underside of their trucks to try to keep people from being able to get underneath them and things like that. So there are many different ways to try to protect yourself from these catalytic converter thieves. But yeah. then just to let you know, they are out here. After you know, I saw my next door neighbor, my cross the street neighbor. He's building him a brand new carport you know what i mean he has a, a garage i guess but he keeps his smoker and most of that stuff in his garage and everything so he really doesn't park his truck in there but i guess he's seen the, the reports of people stealing all these catalytic converters and all these truck thefts that's been going on so he started building him a brand new lockable carport across the street kind right. of an extension off of his garage where he can park his truck in which is a very very smart move have you had your catalytic converter stolen ever before ever had a vehicle stolen from you before let us know 812-303-5018 or on our facebook page facebook.com slash live 999 wjcb yo and that will do it for another edition of urban revolution radio with your boy nino hope you had just as much fun as i did did you d man, blast, bro. man I'm, chill. I'm glad you did glad you did don't forget to check back in with us tomorrow same bad time same bad channel from 8 until 10 for another edition of urban revolution radio with your boy nino and your man dx big ups to our entrepreneur of the week this week Eddie Hickerson, owner of Hickerson Veggies. He's got the veggies, the fruits, the flowers, the honey coming, it's all that good stuff. He even got some 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 uh, uh business swag, you know, the shirts and the hats and all yes, that good stuff. Does. Man, yes, it's kind of fashionable, almost yes, uh, with the with the vine tree growing on the front of it. Somebody said they kind of look like the Timberland tree, but you can tell the distinction. It's not a real right, off no, You know, not. you can tell what what is it, but it is cool, fashionable wear. Yeah. Yes, I mean, <laughs> I will wear it out there. So check out Hickerson veggies, veggies, my man Eddie Hickerson doing his thing out there in Henderson, growing the veggies, trying to feed the masses. And if you are an independent artist or entrepreneur and you want to get your voice heard and get some exposure for your business, all you have to do is hit us up in the email, ninoincognito at gmail.com with a brief description of what you got going on, a clean MP3 version of your music. And if it's on point, We'll show us some love. Anything else for you, D? No, sir. All right. Well, that'll do it for us here at Urban Revolution Radio. It's been a blast. Check back in with us tomorrow. Peace.